Hi, gang. Bob Boving here to bring you the Mystery Project. Tonight, a new story in our Peggy Delaney series by James W. Nickel. Some time ago, Peggy did a column about a surrogate mother. Now, Amber has discovered that there are new and worrying developments about the young pregnant woman. First of all, why has she disappeared? Kyra Harper stars in a play called Nothing Personal. Hello there. You've reached Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. If you have something confidential you want to pass on, just leave your name and number. The walls have ears. I'll get back to you. If you're calling to give me fulsome, unqualified praise for my columns, feel free now. If you're calling to scream at me, fascist, socialist, cop hater, cop lover, pro lesbian, anti lesbian, or anything else that strikes your fancy, go for it. After all, this is a quasi democracy. So, Carlos isn't coming home for supper? No, he called. He has to work late. He's not still doing that undercover job, is he? No, thank God. He's back in homicide. But things aren't quite the same. Oh? When you were away over Christmas, Carlos found out about some cops who were planning to, well, assassinate these two bikers who had murdered a young police officer. Really? Uh huh. Carlos blew their cover, and they had to call their plans off. And the bikers got away. Carlos stopped his cop friends from committing murder, but now he's seen as a, a kind of turncoat. But that's not right. They should thank him. Well, some of them don't see it that way. They're giving him the deep freeze, which, instead of discouraging him, is just making him work twice as hard. But he must be feeling awful. Yeah. It's not fair. No, it's not. People can make you just sick sometimes. Yes, they can. Oh. Guess what I heard today. Do you remember Sylvia Basson? The university student who was hired as a surrogate birth mother by that childless couple from Utah. Sure. Well, she's nine months pregnant now, and she's missing. Missing? Disappeared. For three days now, her boyfriend hasn't seen her, her doctor hasn't seen her, and her due date's in two weeks. How do you know all this? William told me. His older brother, Eddie, is Sylvia's boyfriend. Remember? Oh, right. And that couple from Utah, they're already in Toronto, just in case the baby comes early. I guess they're really upset. Well, I bet. Has anyone gone to the police? Not yet. Why not? William just said no one wants to go to the police right now. Hmm, huh. that's interesting. I wrote that column on Sylvia about eight months ago. Her boyfriend didn't want to talk to me then. I wonder... What? If he has anything to say now. It gets even noisier after four, when the office crowd come in to work out. It's a little quieter in here. Right. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for seeing me this time. I'm real worried. It's not like Sylvia to do something irrational, you know? No. It's four days now. I think we should go to the police, but the Andersons don't. The husband doesn't even like me. I'm not sure I like him either. Why doesn't he like you? I don't know. Every time I see him, he keeps looking at me like he's suspicious about something. Hmm. So why don't you just go to the police on your own? Because... Well, things aren't going that well between Sylvia and me. And if I'm wrong, if she is just taking a time out, going to the cops will mess everything up. How could that mess everything up? It just could. I guess. That's the real reason the Andersons don't want to say anything right now. It's not all that legal to be a surrogate birth mother in Canada, you know. Mm -hmm. It isn't illegal, but according to Sylvia, and she did all the research on it and everything... You know what she's like. Real smart. Yeah. She is. It's just kind of like a gray area. So no one knows just how good these contracts between the women having the babies and the people wanting the babies are. If there was any kind of problem. 
And nobody wants to go to court to find out. Well, the Andersons sure don't. They just want to wait and hope everything turns out okay. And not get the police involved. They're sitting in the King Edward Hotel, their fingers crossed. Uh huh. And you were saying things aren't going so well between you and Sylvia right now. She just doesn't think I have the right attitude. To what? To this whole thing. When she got talking about it at first, I thought it was like way out there. Get pregnant with some other man's kid? For what? For money. Yeah, I know. That's what Sylvia said. It was perfect. She wanted to go on for her masters, and she didn't want to stop and work to make enough money. And there wasn't enough grant money, and I wasn't making enough money. I said she might end up with stretch marks and everything. She said she wasn't worried about that because I'm a trainer, you know, and I could figure out the best way for her to get back in shape. She has an answer for everything. So that was the conflict. Well, no, not all of it. Once she started to show, get bigger, I felt kind of weird. And the bigger she got, it was like I wanted to hold her close and see if I could feel the baby kicking in there, or put my ear down on her and listen for its heartbeat. But it wasn't mine. She was my girlfriend, but it wasn't my baby. Did she understand how you were feeling? Not really. She said I was being illogical. I, I love her a lot, and I don't want to be illogical again. Maybe she wants to be alone, away from me for a while. Maybe she is just tired. But I'm scared for her. I'm sorry. No, don't be. I, I, I'd be upset too. All the years we've been trying to have a child, all the intrusive medical procedures my wife has endured, all the disappointments. To hire a surrogate seemed like such a straight-ahead choice, and now to have her disappear. I don't mean to appear selfish. I'm worried about Sylvia. I'm worried sick about her. We both are, aren't we, Jay? Yes. It's just so uh, confusing. It's a boy, you know. Is it? You did the test. Yes. All the tests. Ah.、Uh-huh. Then Sylvia is not upset because she found out there's something wrong with the baby. I know your agreement stipulates the baby has to be healthy. It's perfect, according to her doctor. I mean, we get all the reports. I just want my baby, and we've been sitting in this stupid hotel room for four days. Lady, everything will turn out all right. Will it? When I interviewed Sylvia, she didn't strike me as someone who would act impulsively. Just the opposite. That's exactly right. That's what I've been saying. And she sounded great when I called to say we were on our way up here. There's absolutely no chance Sylvia has suddenly changed her mind about about giving up the child. But you don't know that. You don't know.、Uh, how long are you going to wait for her to show up before you go to the police? Eddie wants to go now. Yes, I know. That's all we need: more pressure from the boyfriend, and more turmoil if we go to the police. I'm sure there's a logical explanation. I'm sure she's going to call. I just have that feeling. We're going to wait. Oh, hi. Hi, Eddie. I、uh, just talked to the Andersons. I thought I'd drop around and report. Oh, great. Thanks.、Oh, come on in.、Huh? Excuse the mess.、Mm, don't worry about that.、Uh, that's Sylvia's bag over there, packed for the hospital. Oh. It's been ready for a while, in, in case the baby came early. I've left it right where she put it. Lots of books. What's she studying? Uh, biochemistry. She's specializing in the autoimmune system. Ah. 
Oh, I see she's got my article about her and the Andersons pinned up on her message board. She thought you did a good job. Well, it seemed important to her to go public about surrogacy. Sylvia says it has to do with control. She says men are always trying to control women one way or another. Now it's around surrogacy. What do you think? It seemed to make sense. It got more complicated than I thought it would. Oh? About how I felt about her being pregnant with someone else's kid, I mean. How about Sylvia? Did it get more complicated for her, too, as her pregnancy went along? Sylvia says uh, feelings are just the ebb and flow of the body's chemistry. She deals in logic. Oh, well, that's one way of looking at things. And what's all this? Well, let's see. She pins up lots of stuff. Oh, just clippings out of the university newspaper. Uh, they interviewed her a couple of times about being a surrogate, too. She's kind of a celeb on campus. There's some letters to the editor here as well. She got into a real dogfight with a prof. There was some kind of public debate on reproductive technology. This guy was a speaker. He condemned most everything. And Sylvia stood up and argued against him. I guess she just chased circles around the guy. So then he wrote a long letter to the university paper tearing down her position. Then she wrote back tearing down his. And on and on. She loved it. Looks like it. She said he started to accidentally bump into her. You know? In the coffee shop or coming out of one of her labs somewhere. Oh? It was sort of like, oh, now we bumped into each other accidentally. Let's continue to discuss our differences. She just brushed him off. That's interesting, though, isn't it? What do you mean? Well, I'm just wondering, that's all. This professor, just how angry did he get with her? God, I never thought about him. Oh, I'm probably jumping to the wrong conclusion. Yeah. But why is she missing? I don't remember feeling like I wanted to go on a holiday when I was nine months pregnant. I wanted to stay near the phone, near my doctor, near the hospital. I just wanted it over. I feel even worse now. Excuse me, Professor Edward? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't make an appointment. I just thought I'd take a chance on catching you between classes. The office said that... Do I know you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Peggy Delaney from the Toronto Tribune. Oh, yes, yes. I wrote a column, well, almost nine months ago now, about a student here who's acting as a surrogate birth mother for an American couple. I, I believe I know who you're talking about. You do? Yeah, Sylvia Basson. That's right. Um, I'm doing a follow-up column on Sylvia, and I know you and she had a sharp exchange of letters to the editor of the campus newspaper on surrogacy and the whole issue of reproductive technology. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to include a comment or two from you. You did? Yes. Hmm. So have you been talking to Sylvia lately? No. What do you think of her anyway? I mean, personally. I don't think of her personally at all. Oh. I think she's misguided in her thinking. I'm an ethics professor. My job is to mull these things over. I'm concerned about incubating babies for profit, of course, but a more concern is the disconnect that I feel will happen when a child of a surrogate gets old enough to ask the question seriously, where did I come from? Now, it's one thing to have been conceived and carried by a woman who, for one distressing reason or another, couldn't take care of you. At least she and you are connected in a visceral, human way. But to come from a donor egg that may or may not be the surrogate mother's own egg, but in any case comes from a woman who has no connection at all to you, except for the desire to make money, might create a new kind of dislocation and bewilderment in these children's psyches. I'm, I'm just saying, we have enough surrogate children now. Let's do the research before we open up this endeavor to unrestrained capitalism, shall we? You and Sylvia seem to get into a very extended argument over this. Yes, we did. 
She told her boyfriend that you were bumping into her all over campus to continue the debate. Did she? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, uh, we have been bumping into each other around campus, but I could have sworn it was the other way around. What do you mean? Well, just that I noticed, uh, once it had become general knowledge that I am sitting on the jury of an important scholarship program here, that Sylvia kept bumping into me, and uh, her tone changed quite remarkably. She seemed you know, very friendly all of a sudden. Did she? Oh, yes. Well... Our professor didn't blink. No? What did he say? Oh, he was quick to admit he knew her and that he'd been debating with her, but I don't know. If he does have anything to do with Sylvia going missing, it just didn't show. She's been gone five days now. Yeah. You don't think I have anything to do with her being missing, do you? No. (sighs) Good. Because I've been wondering... And you don't think this prof has anything to do with it? It just doesn't feel like it to me. Yeah, right. I think maybe I'll stick around anyway. Try to follow him. Doing something feels better than doing nothing. Okay. What's he look like? Goatee, brown corduroy jacket. But just follow him. Don't do anything, you know... Yeah, I know. Uh, Eddie, he just went into room 211. Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune Peggy, hi, it's uh, Jay Jay Anderson Oh, hi Hi Something's come up about Sylvia Basson I need your help You do? Yes Can you meet me uh, outside my hotel? I'll be there in 15 minutes Hi Where's Muriel? She didn't want to come down. Oh? Oh, Well, I can't park here. I'll just drive around. Yeah, okay. (sighs) Tired? I'm having one of those if-only-I-could-do-it-all-over-again moments. What? Surrogacy in general? Sylvia in particular? (sighs) You know, the one thing Sylvia wouldn't tell me was how much money she was going to make. She said it was beside the point. She said she was having the baby mainly to make you and Muriel happy. Is that right? The equivalent of a thousand U.S. when we signed the agreement and ten thousand U.S. when the baby was born. Well, that's about the going rate. Yes, it is. And it's really important to you and Muriel to have a genetically related child. Otherwise, you could have adopted a, a baby or at least tried to. With Sylvia, the sperm is yours. The baby is genetically related by half. She looked right, too. I mean, Sylvia and I are both blue-eyed and blonde. And she was smart. <sighs> too smart, as it turned out. Jay, what's going on? <sighs> One day, when Sylvia was about five months pregnant, I got a call from her at my office. We'd done all the tests by then. We knew the baby was healthy. <laughs> It's a little boy. Muriel was over the moon. And? And Sylvia told me she was changing her mind. She was thinking about keeping the baby. Oh, no. Yes. And she said, because the legal status of surrogate contracts are shaky up here, that she was sure if she pleaded a sudden maternal attachment, she'd win the right to keep the child. However, if I paid an additional $5,000 right then, wired the money up to her, she might be persuaded to change her mind. You're kidding. I wish I was. Did you pay her? With all that Muriel had been through, what else could I do? I felt if anything went wrong with this arrangement, it would break her heart. It was a huge mistake. Why? Because then Sylvia knew I was vulnerable. When we came up here, this time, for the birth of our son, and she disappeared on us, I knew exactly what she was doing. Have you heard from her? Yeah, she left a note at the front desk at noon today, telling me to call a certain number. I did. She answered. 
Apparently, she's feeling maternal again. She'll hand over the baby and sign the final document so we can take the baby home for an additional $10,000. Oh, my God. That's $26,000 altogether. What are you going to do? Well, this time I had to talk to Muriel. I told her everything. I don't know whether she was more upset to find out what Sylvia's up to or that I kept the first payment to Sylvia a secret from her. You know, that I tried to protect her. Yeah, I can understand how she's feeling. I'm supposed to meet Sylvia in half an hour at this restaurant. She thinks I've agreed to go along with her, transfer the extra 10000 into her bank account. That's what I told her. Are you? <laughs> no way. Muriel thought that maybe you could help us. How? I'm planning to tell Sylvia that if she doesn't stop what she's doing, Muriel and I are going to sue her for extortion, which I assume is a criminal offense up here. And what's more, Peggy Delaney knows all about what's going on, and you've promised to write about her in the paper. I'm going to tell Sylvia that you are going to make her famous for all the wrong reasons. I see. So, I'm asking you, please... Can Muriel and I use your name? Oh, we can do better than that. Hello, Sylvia. Hi, Jay. I'm sorry I worried you. Yeah, well, Muriel's hysterical. Gee, I'm sorry. Well, as soon as we get our business meeting over with, I'll go see her. Oh, what are you going to tell her? Oh, just that I was really tired out from carrying her big bundle of joy around, I guess, and... I went home to my mother's place for a bit of a timeout. Without telling anyone? Yes. Stupid me. So, can we get on with this? Because there's a really interesting guest lecturer who's speaking at seven tonight, and I don't want to miss it. Sure, sure. We can get on with it. So, have you wired the money into my account? Have you got a receipt or something? Oh, God, what's she doing here? Sylvia, hi there. Oh, hi. I haven't seen you for what? Almost nine months. And uh, you're Jay Anderson. That's right. Can I join you? I don't think we're... Sure. Thanks. Well, Sylvia, it looks like your little project is close to completion. I could eat off my stomach. I know. So what's this I hear about you? I don't know. What? That you've extorted an extra 5000 out of the Andersons, and now you're shooting for another ten. So anyway, I- I've got to go. I've got... No, you stay right where you are. Which happens to be at the end of the line. The extortion train doesn't go past here, Sylvia, unless you want Mr. Anderson to go to the police, and unless you want me to do a juicy feature story on you. I have no control over what Jay has been telling you. Other than to inform you, Miss Delaney, that if he's talking about extortion, then the pressure of impending fatherhood has made him unstable. So when the police look at your bank statements of about four months ago, there'll be no $5,000 U.S. transfer in there, right? Like I said, I have no idea what Jay has been telling you. I just know that everything is going well with the baby. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll be sticking to the terms of our agreement. There'll be no changes in anything. Jay. I promise it will be just the way it says on the papers we signed. You don't have to worry. Muriel doesn't have to worry, okay? No. That's too easy for you, Sylvia. I'm going to deduct the 5000 I already paid you off the ten I owe you. What? That's right. I'm agreeing with you. We'll stick to the exact terms of our contract. Do you have any idea how difficult it's been for me? No, you don't. Being sick all the time for the first months and still having to go to classes. Looking like a blimp and trying to do all my labs, being kicked in the stomach all the time. Hardly being able to sleep. My back aches. I've got stretch marks. And you've got more money than you know what to do with. And I can hardly feed myself. And you pull this crap on me? Why? Because I'm helpless? Because I'm a woman? Because I'm pregnant with your child? Well, thanks a lot. I'm going to get so upset. I'm going to be sick. Oh, God, the poor baby. I just feel so sick. Here, drink some water. I don't want any water. Oh, shut a sock, Aunt Sylvia. You're no more sick than I am. I am, too. Look, are you going to stick to your deal or not? 
Yes. Satisfied. When I called you the other day, I forgot to ask how you made out with Professor Eckhart. Oh, jeez. Well, I followed him to this parking lot. He gets in his car, drives away, and I'm looking all around for a cab, you know? But there wasn't one. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I just stood there, watching him disappear. Anyway, it didn't matter. Sylvia showed up later the same day. Thanks for calling me and uh, setting me straight. Oh, no, that's okay. Sylvia would never have told me what was going on if I hadn't known already. Oh, well, how did she take having to confess? Yeah, well, I got angry at her for hurting the Andersons and disappearing on me and worrying me sick. And I said I couldn't understand how she could do something like that. And then she got angry at me for getting angry at her. Oh? Yeah. She said I was betraying her by getting angry at her. I moved out. You did? I'm living with a buddy of mine. As far as I know, Sylvia's still waiting to go to the hospital. Yeah, that's right. I've been keeping in touch with the Andersons. I still love her. And I really respect how smart she is. But Sylvia's got to figure some things out, you know? Like, how to treat other people. Yeah. You've been listening to this week's episode of Peggy Delaney by James W. Nickel. A play called Nothing Personal. Heard in the cast today, Kyra Harper was Peggy. Katerina Scorsone was Amber. With them were Zachary Bennett as Eddie. Gemma Sampronia as Sylvia Basson. Alan Jordan as Jay Anderson. Elizabeth Brown as Muriel Anderson. And Chuck Shimata as Professor Eckhart. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kimlicka and performed by Ray Parker, Kevin McKenzie, Rick Whitelaw, and Scott Alexander. The recording engineer was Wayne Richards, with sound effects by Matt Wilcott. The associate producer was Colleen Woods. Production and direction were by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. I'm Bob Bolving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments.